Okay, so let's go ahead and put your super powerful brain to work on this lovely math word problem. A matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is a ladder's maximum angle is 75 degrees for safety. How long of a ladder is needed to reach a height of 90 feet? Okay, so if you can figure this out, of course, you're not going to just uh, look at this problem and have your answer. So you might want to pause the video, but uh, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second. Now, for those of you that, uh, you know, are looking at this problem and you're saying, there's no way, I don't even know what to, you know, do here or start. That's okay as well, because after you finish this video, you'll know exactly how the solution was obtained. But uh, at a minimum, see if you can come up with a quick sketch that models the problem, okay? Because that's going to really help uh, understand the solution. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we're going to have to kind of simplify or interpret or kind of make some assumptions about this problem, but kind of use some common sense to interpret, um, you know, what's going on here. And that's often the case in math where problems, you kind of have to oversimplify the situation. So if you're confused on what the problem's asking, well, let me see if I can clear that up. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So how to, uh, long of a ladder do we need in order to reach uh, 90 feet up in the sky? Well, we need approximately uh, 90 feet, uh, 93.17 feet. Okay, this is an approximation. You'll understand why it's an approximation. So that's how long of a ladder we're going to need to reach 90, uh, a height of 90 feet, uh, being nice and safe with a maximum angle of 75 degrees. And again, if you're kind of like, I don't even understand the problem, well, you'll understand it in just one second. But uh, for those of you that got this right, that is outstanding. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you a nice, happy face and A++. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you like 150% multiple stars. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, go home, take it easy. Uh, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, clearly... Uh, you are a math genius, and you would say, I don't know, I just watched that guy on YouTube. He really helps me out. But in all, serious, all seriousness, that's great because you're showing uh, me that you understand uh, some basic trigonometry. And that's what we're going to need to solve this particular problem. And a lot of you, you know, when you hear this word trigonometry, you're like, oh, you know, it's trigonometry. We're going to do trigonometry. You might be kind of like, no way, I'm not going to do trigonometry. That's too advanced. I'll never understand that. Well, listen, just hold on one second. This is a great opportunity for you to learn some basic trigonometry and just to get an appreciation of why we need trigonometry. And I'm going to tell you right now, even if you've never um, taken trigonometry or studied it, you'll be able to understand, uh, you know, um, what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to really break this down in nice, easy terms. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here. And first things first, again, we are dealing with a math word problem. So we always want to use the rule of three. In other words, read a problem at least three times. Read it once, read it again, really make sure you understand. And then of course, make sure you understand the question. And the question is, we need to know how long of a ladder is needed so we can get 90 feet uh, up in the sky, okay? Maybe up against a building or whatnot. And the maximum angle uh, for uh, safety reasons is 75 degrees. So uh, once you kind of have a good sense of the problem, what we need to do is visualize the problem, right? There's that old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words. And in mathematics, it definitely, um, you know, is an appropriate uh, saying because when you see the situation, you can, you know, kind of see solutions, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, model this problem. And this is effectively uh, the scenario. Okay, so for safety reasons, our ladder, its maximum angle is 75 degrees. Now I'm just kind of doing a quick sketch. So uh, here in yellow would be our ladder. 
And uh, for example, let me just kind of sketch this out to make this very clear. So a ladder, let's say right here, this is leaning up against a side of a building or something at 30 degrees. Now that's not even too safe because this thing could probably, you know, slide down, right? So, uh, you know, we could go higher with the ladder. We can go 45 degrees, right? But, uh, you know, that's, you know, pretty sturdy. We can kind of make this thing steeper so we can go higher up in the air, right? So, you know, for safety reasons, and maybe for those of you that ever worked in, um, well, in any work uh, place there's in the United States, it's OSHA, I believe I have it correct, uh, which is, of course, you know, has workplace guidelines, safety guidelines, and whatnot, and you have maximum um, angles for uh, ladders. Okay, so for example, you can't put your ladder like at, you know, what would this angle be? This would be something like 95 degrees. That's pretty steep, right? You can imagine someone climbing up there and then the ladder tilting back. So effectively, the problem is saying that the steepest we can make a ladder, okay, is 75 degrees. And this angle is being formed by the ladder and the ground. Okay, so we could just have to use some common sense to interpret this. So here is our ladder. Here's the maximum angle we can go. And of course, we would want to do that uh, to reach this height of 90 uh, feet. Okay, so this is the height. So this is the scenario that we want to kind of, um, uh, you know, build so we can understand the problem, right? So we have the only uh, pieces of information, information we have here is, okay, we want to go 90 feet. We have this ladder. We know uh, this angle is is 75, but at this point, we need to make some uh, assumptions. And this is perfectly normal in mathematics, especially in a various math courses. So let's go ahead and um, uh, tell you what those assumptions are. So the first thing is we gotta consider that the ground is perfectly uh, horizontal. It's a perfect straight line, okay? And then the height, let's say right here, a building, uh, this is gonna be per totally perpendicular. Uh, to the ground. Okay, so in other words, this right here, if you can see this part of the problem, is going to form a right triangle. Okay, a right triangle. And right triangles are tremendously important in mathematics. Okay, all right, so this really is a right triangle uh, word problem. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a quick review of right triangles. Now, we're not going to need um, to know this uh, right here for this particular problem, but I'm going to uh, review it anyways very briefly because if some of you out there don't know much about right triangles, you're going to want to know this even before you know trigonometry. Okay, so real quick, here is a lovely uh, right triangle. Okay, we know it's a triangle because it's a three-sided polygon, and we have this lovely little notation right here in the corner. This little square notation indicates that this is 90 degrees. Okay, so anytime you have a triangle and any, uh, if there's one angle in the triangle that's 90 degrees, that is by definition a right triangle and you'll see it by this little square. Okay, so this is a real life right triangle and uh, this is what we call a Pythagorean uh, uh, triple. Uh, you don't really even need to know that, but basically uh, this side is three, this side is four, and this longest side is five. Now the longest side of a triangle right here is called the hypotenuse. Okay, you wanna remember that? That's gonna come up again here in a second, right? So the longest side of a right triangle is a hypotenuse. The other sides are just called sides. Okay, so this right here is called the uh, Pythagorean theorem. I'm not, I'm not gonna write that out because I probably misspell it on the fly, but I'll say it again, the Pythagorean theorem, it's probably one of the most important uh, formulas in all of mathematics. It's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I'm gonna show you what this, uh, show you how this works here in one quick second. So uh, this is uh, one of the, uh, again, primary uh, theorems, okay? I, you notice what I'm saying here, the Pythagorean theorem, all right, I'll spell that out, and hopefully I don't misspell that, a theorem, okay? in mathematics is uh, basically like a law, okay? It's a property. Now there's some technical 
uh, distinctions between a theorem and a postulate. For some of you out there that are math super geniuses, you know, if I say postulate, you may uh, have heard, you know, heard of that term before. That's different than a theorem, which is different than a corollary, which is different. See, you know, we get all technical on mathematics. I don't want to get too crazy here. But uh, anyways, Pythagorean theorem, effectively, it's just a property, a law of right triangles. Now, this right here, okay, is the secret code to trigonometry, okay? It's the secret code to trigonometry. I'll explain this here in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at this Pythagorean theorem so you understand uh, its um, importance when we have right triangles. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c, uh, c squared. What this theorem states is that if we square uh, the sides and add up, the if we get the sum or we find the sum of the square of the sides, okay, in other words, we're going to square this side, we're going to square this side, we're going to add this up, it's going to be the same as the uh, um, square of the hypotenuse, all right? So let's just kind of see this in action. So again, this is a real uh, right triangle. So uh, for every actual right triangle, it will um, follow the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and just see this in action. All right, so we'll call this side A. This can be A or this can be B. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, it will work out the same. So A squared will be 3 squared. Okay, so we'll call this side, uh, again, A. This side will be B. The longest side... And uh, let me um, stress this because I don't think I made this clear. The longest side when we're using the Pythagorean theorem is always C. Okay, this is always the hypotenuse. So as long as you're, you remember that, you'll be okay. Okay, these can be the other sides, and one can be A, one can be. It doesn't make a difference. This side C has to be the longest side. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this to work. So A squared would be three squared plus this other side here, which would be four squared that's gonna be equal to five squared. All right, so three squared is what? Nine, four squared is what? Four times four is 16, five squared is 25. Nine plus 16 is 25, and 25 is equal to 25. Okay, so that is the Pythagorean theorem in action. And uh, this is, again, extremely important in geometry and in trigonometry. You must know the Pythagorean theorem. But uh, for our particular problem here, even if you didn't know the Pythagorean theorem, you could, you know, I'll still uh, explain the solution and you'll be able to still understand it. But when it comes to uh, right triangles, you know, you want to absolutely master the Pythagorean theorem. There's a lot to this. Matter of fact, if you want to know more about the, about the Pythagorean theorem, let's study it. I have additional videos on my YouTube channel you can check out. Uh, also, uh, I'll leave links to my full geometry courses and pre-algebra courses uh, and algebra courses. I actually teach this in all those courses. Uh, you'll see the links to those courses in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next part, which is the secret to trigonometry. All right, so this is a lovely saying. Now, there's other sayings out there, but uh, this is just kind of one of those mnemonic memory aid sayings. So let me just kind of tell you what it is. So it's uh, so ka toa. So ka toa. Now, a lot of you might be saying, okay, this, this guy, is, you know, he's driving me crazy. I don't even know what he's talking about. He's speaking a foreign language here. I don't know what he's saying. Well, I'm saying so ka toa, all right? So if you can kind of remember that saying, so ka toa, then you'll understand trigonometry. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, if you have a scientific calculator available, and even if you don't, uh, even if you go onto your phone uh, and you look at your calculator app, um, I'm pretty sure for most smartphones, I'm assuming uh, most of you out, uh, out there have a smartphone, you could switch it to scientific mode, from basic mode to scientific mode, or even like on your computer, you can pull up a scientific um, uh, version of a calculator, all right? Now, when you um, you know do that, or if you actually have a scientific calculator, You'll see these buttons here, uh, S-I-N-C-O-S-T-A-N. This is called the sine, this is called the cosine, and this is called the tangent. These are uh, uh, the main trigonometric functions that we use, and uh, they're just so powerful and so awesome. But anyways, uh, we're going to understand what each of these means here in just one second. But I want you to make sure you understand this uh, saying, so ka toa. I'll explain what that means in just one second. Now, I can't... Um, kind of decipher this saying unless we take a look at uh, this right triangle right here. Okay, now trigonometry is the mathematics that has to deal with uh, angles, okay? 
and particularly right triangle trigonometry is uh, situations where unlike our Pythagorean theorem uh, situation right here, we don't have any angle information. We just have the sides, right? There's no angles. We're not talking about angles, although I could find angles here, but there's no angles. I'm just looking at the lengths. Now, as soon as I give you an angle, okay, well, now we're talking about trigonometry. So let's suppose I give you this angle located right here in this corner of this right triangle. Again, we're talking about a right triangle, not just any old triangle. It has to be a right triangle. Okay, so let's suppose I'm talking about this angle right here. Now, I want you to remember these uh, letters here, O, A, and H. So what is H? Well, it's the longest side of this right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. Remember, we, did, uh, we already kind of discussed that. The longest side of a right triangle is the hypotenuse, therefore it is H. Now, when we look at this angle, the side that's opposite of this angle is right here. So look at this angle, the side that's opposite is located right here, and the side that is um, adjacent to this angle, which helps form the, uh, the angle, is right here. So this side right here that is adjacent or next to the angle, we're going to label A. The side that is opposite of the angle, this one right here, we're going to label as O, and then the longest side of this angle, uh, right triangle is uh, H or the hypotenuse. Okay, So if you can remember these positions relative to an angle in a right triangle, then you're going to be able to understand trigonometry. And of course, all this is going to uh, uh, you know, uh, result in us getting the solution to this problem. Okay, so now let's continue on and take a look at a couple examples of exactly how this work, works. Excuse me. All right, so as I indicated, we have SOCATOA. So what does this mean here? Well, let me go back up to the same. Let's take it one at a time. So this right here means the sine, the sine of an angle is opposite over the hypotenuse. This is what this is, right? So you'll see this in action. The sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now this doesn't make you know much sense right now, but I'm going to show you exactly what this means. Okay, so let's take a look at our lovely uh, uh, right triangle three, four, five, and here's this angle. Okay, whatever this angle is, the sine is so. Okay, so the sine of this angle is always going to be O over H. So this angle here, okay, where is its opposite? Well, its opposite is right here, right? So this would be its opposite over the um, hypotenuse. So, right, is the sine. Now hopefully you're like, okay, I get that, I get that. So the opposite is three, okay, and the hypotenuse here is five. Okay, so the sine of this angle is three over five, right? Uh, the kind of formal description of what I'm talking about here is something called trigonometric ratios trigonometric ratios, right? So uh, for those of you that want to learn more about this, this is what we are talking about. Trigonometric ratios, because a ratio is a comparison. So effectively a fraction, we're comparing one side of the triangle with another. Let's take a look at the cosine. The cosine of this angle is so ka, right? C-A-H. So that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So here I could just, oh, that's four over five. We're just referencing uh, you know, the information in the triangle. And then the tangent, so katoa, T-O-A, is what the, um, the tangent of this angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, it'd be three over four, okay? Now, again, this doesn't, uh, you know, really maybe have too much meaning here because you're like, well, okay, that's great, Mr. U2 Math Man, but how's this going to help us solve the problem? Well, you're going to see that in just one second, but we got to, you know, lay down some foundation for trigonometry that, uh, you know, maybe some of you either forgot or maybe never learned, all right? But this is not that difficult. Okay, so let's go to take our next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really does help me out big time. It helps me reach more people that like math, just want to keep their you know, brain sharp by figuring out various math problems. But most importantly, I am trying to reach people that need assistance in mathematics or are struggling, and I don't want those people to give up. So if that is you, please don't give up. What you need uh, to be successful in math is encouragement, okay? A strong work ethic, you gotta be willing to do the work. But most importantly, 
you need clear and understandable instruction. And that's what I'm trying to provide. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that notification button as well. Thank you so much. This is the way I look right now. And now back to the problem. Okay, so here's the situation. Okay, we have our ladder. Okay, we, now we know its maximum angle is 75 degrees. And we're trying to get this ladder, uh, uh, you know, um, a long enough ladder such that when it's at 75 degrees right here, that we can reach 90 degrees this way in a vertical manner. Okay, so this is the interpretation of our problem. And now what we want to do is simplify uh, this uh, situation into a triangle problem. This is the way we solve a uh, right triangle problem. So let's go ahead and simplify the scenario down into a right triangle. So that would look something like this. Okay, let's pair, uh, let's kind of focus over here. I'll explain this in a second. So here is the ground. Here is maybe the side of a building. It's 90 feet this way, okay? 75 degrees is our angle right here. And what we're trying to um, uh, determine is this uh, length right here, which would be the length of the ladder, right? This is the length of the ladder, okay, at 75 degrees, okay, uh, an angle, maximum angle of 75 degrees, and this side right here is 90 degrees. Now, because um, we're experts in basic trigonometric ratios, we can interpret this pr uh, problem using the so, okay, so ka toa business I just went over, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is look at this triangle and say, all right, which one is the opposite, which is the hypotenuse, which is the adjacent? Okay, so here is the angle right here, okay? The adjacent is the side right next to the angle, the one that's, you know, uh, forming the angle. Now, the side that's opposite of the angle would be this side, okay? And then, of course, the longest side of this right triangle is always the hypotenuse, okay? So you can see here that the, uh, the opposite, excuse me, is going to be 90 feet, okay? And what we're looking for is this, okay? We're looking for the length of the ladder, which is what? It's the um, hypotenuse. So we gotta be thinking about so katoa, like which one of those, uh, uh, you know, between sine, uh, cosine, and tangent involves O and H, okay? Because we don't need the A. We, we have O, right? We have this uh, piece of information right here, 90 feet, that's what's given. I'm looking for this. I'm not concerned about the A. I need the trigonometric ratio that involves O and H. So which one involves O and H? And if you look here, it's going to be the sine. The sine involves O and H. So that is what we're going to use in order to figure out this problem. Okay, so th the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now let's go ahead and put our trigonometry to work to solve this problem. Okay, so here is our lovely right triangle right here. Uh, we got 75 degrees. Uh, our, uh, this side here is 90 feet. Uh, and we're looking for this side of this right triangle. Okay, so we're going to use the sine, okay, to figure this out. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Therefore, the sine of this angle, 75 degrees right here, is equal to the opposite, which the opposite over uh, of this particular angle is 90, okay, over the hypotenuse, which is x, okay, 90 over x. So now we just have to solve this lovely basic equation, okay? Sine of 75 degrees is equal to 90 over x. This is not that difficult. And if you have a calculator handy, um, you know, uh, you're, you can kind of walk through the solution with me. But in order to do this problem, you will need a calculator. Now, let me get a little bit old school uh, for those of you out there that uh, I would uh, say you have to be, uh, well, uh, you got to be, well over 50 years old. Yeah, I'm pretty sure 50, years, at least the time of this video, uh, to know what I'm talking about. Back in the good old days, let's suppose you were in high school in the, uh, maybe the early 80s, mid 80s, uh, uh, early 80s, and you know, obviously 70s and 60s. That's a terrible book. Uh, let me kind of draw a better book here. So when you took, you know, algebra two, trigonometry, matter of fact, it was pretty common uh, to take trigonometry as a semester course. I'm kind of digressing here a bit, but yeah, I just can't help myself. But back in those days, uh, you know, calculators weren't like, you know, uh, first of all, they were super expensive and most students really didn't have them. Okay. Some did not say they didn't exist, but like, especially in the seventies, they, you know, that was a real, you know, 
uh, pricey uh, instrument, you know, to have a tool to have. So basically, what I'm saying is, to find the sine of an angle, like sine of 75, you would have to go inside the back of your book. There was tables, trigonometric function uh, tables, logarithm. You'd have to go and look it up on a piece of paper, right? So, you know, for those of you that, you know, again, you know, 30, 40 years old and you got your fancy calculator, you shouldn't be complaining because we used to, you know, it was tough back in the good old days. Not only did we have to walk in snow barefoot 20 miles, our trigonometry books, we used to have to look things up by hands. And then, you know, if you really want to get old school, for those of you that went to high school in the 60s and, uh, you know, probably the 70s as well, you used to use slide rules, which are like, you know, anyways, I digress. So, and, you know, because you have a calculator, you shouldn't, you just so you can really have to appreciate that thing and what it does. Okay. So, um, anyways, so we got to figure out what the sine of 75 degrees is, and you're going to have to use a calculator. Now, one quick other uh, mention, because we're going to have to plug this in with this button here. We're going to use this button on our calculator or whatever calculator on your phone, the sine, S I N. Now, there's another thing I want to mention. Uh, your calculators have different modes, degrees and radians. We can measure uh, angles, okay, like this, 75 degrees. Uh, we can measure things in degrees, angles and degrees, and we can also measure them in things called radians. And uh, when you're taking actual trigonometry courses, you're going to have to do prompts in radians and in degrees. And one of the most common ways students mess up on quizzes and exams is they forget to switch their calculators back from degree to radian mode. So if you are, in fact, you know, taking some sort of trigonometry, you've got to be, uh, you know, hyper alert that when you do work in radians, you switch your calculator back in degree mode. Okay, I have seen plenty of sad faces through the years because, you know, students are doing everything right, but they just forgot to uh, switch their mode uh, on their calculator and get the wrong answer. Okay, so, you know, as a quick introduction to uh, trigonometry and your calculator, now let's put all that to work. So we need this button, S-I-N, and we need this, our calculator in degree mode. And now we just need to go ahead and do this quick calculation. So the sine is 75 degrees, uh, and then we just go back over here, right? So remember, this is what we're trying to figure out. Sine of 75 degrees is equal to 90 over X. Now, right here, I'm just going to put this over 1 so we have a lovely uh, proportion. Okay, and I can do that. Anything divided by 1 is just itself. And so right here, we're just going to apply some basic algebra. Okay, uh, matter of fact, the cross product. So we're going to take X times sine of 75 degrees is this. This is just going to be a number, a decimal. But don't do this yet in your calculator. So X times the sine of 75 degrees. Okay, we'll write it this way. It's going to be equal to 1 times 90, right? So, again, you can go onto your calculator and see, oh, sine of 75 degrees is just a particular decimal, but don't do that just yet. It'll make your work messy. So now we want to solve for x, and how do we do that? Well, we just simply divide both sides of the equation by sine of 75 degrees, and you'll get this. x is equal to 90 divided by sine of 75 degrees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug this into our calculators. So we're going to go 90 divided by sine, 75 degrees. Again, we want to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. Um, by default, uh, your calculators are, its default mode is degree mode. So as long as you didn't mess with it and switch it over to RADS, R-A-D-S, radians, you'll be okay. So if you're like, I don't even know what you're doing, well, don't, don't even go look for it because you might uh, mess it up. But if you did this right, you're going to get a decimal of 93.17, uh, et cetera, and we're just going to just round it off. So 93.17 feet is our answer. Okay, so I really took a lot of time here to explain this because I'm going to just, you know, I'm making the assumption that a lot of you out there either forgot trigonometry or some of you may never even have taken trigonometry. So, you know, the whole purpose of, you know, me kind of walking through this problem nice and slow was really to motivate uh, those of you out, out there that were like, trigonometry, that's so scary. I'll never take that. That's like, you know, advanced math. No, you know, math is just a language, okay? Um, and you, you have to work your way up, okay, to learn this language. It's just like, you know, when you first start you know, start off, you learn the, the ABCs and just continue to go, you know, you're not going to be writing, you know, a novel and doing all kinds of, you know, elaborate, you know, communication until you kind of build yourself up. Math is no different. But to hopefully I did 
a decent job, at least uh, introducing the concept of trigonometry. And trigonometry is essential because, you know, problems like this, we cannot solve them without trigonometry. Okay, we need trigonometry. It's absolutely critical. And uh, if you do want to learn some trigonometry, uh, let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. One, you, I teach basic right angle trigonometry, kind of the stuff that we're talking about here in my geometry course. Okay, you can find a link to that in the description. But if you really want to learn trigonometry, advanced trigonometry, uh, then you're going to have to check out my pre-calculus course. You'll find that in uh, the description as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.